Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, the workshop. We're on lesson six here, calling programs from SQL with result sets. So, I mean, it should be known that if you have something that's accessible via SQL, then it's pretty much accessible from any um, third party source. So whether you are building a web API, PHP, Python or Node, if you can call a program through SQL, then it can be called from any of those ecosystems, which is really important for, um, you know, uh, modernizing, if you like, I hate that word, but it's really good at helping you grow your platform. So what I would like to show you is how we can make a program like uh, like Lesson 5's program, this is Lesson 5's program, how we can take the data from the program and return it into relational data from an SQL statement. So what I'm going to do is, uh, what am I going to do? First of all, I'm going to go ahead and create a new member Lesson six, the RPGLE, like so. I'm going to save that. Okay, so and I'm going to compile it just to make sure it compiles, and it does. That's great. So, okay, how do we get the data from here instead of displaying it back into relational data? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and get rid of our display, and let's go and make a, another data structure. We're going to call it Depart. You know, we'll just call it departments, okay? Like DS, department T, and we're going to give it a dim 50, because that's how many rows, let's say, I would like to return. Now, that could be a lot more. I'm just using 50 as an example of the amount of rows I would like to return. And we're also going to need an index. So I'm going to make a variable called index. I'm going to just give it an int free, because it's quite small. And what we're going to say is index equals 1. We always start at 1, okay? And let's say right here, we're going to say departments index equals, hmm, this is interesting. How should we do it? I don't think we even need current depth anymore. Yeah, we don't. Let's do this. And then we can say index plus equals one. So what this is doing now, instead of putting variables, uh, any of the returning data into our current depth, we're just assigning it to um, elements in our array. Okay, oh, cancel. Let's go ahead, why do I keep pressing the wrong button? Let's go ahead and save that. So now let's just try and compile it. Pretty straightforward, instead of putting, you know, in printing, each item into current depth like we were uh, in lesson five. I seem to have closed lesson five for some reason. We're just putting it into an array element. Okay, really straightforward. And then really at the end to actually get the data out, all we're gonna do is this really cheeky SQL statement. But actually I've just realized to do that, we need to be able to use embedded SQL. So uh, this is the wrong type. In fact, I should close this. I should refresh this. I don't know if we, put the rename functionality in here yet. Nope. Uh, nope. So what we're going to do is just come over to our green screen, do work member PDM, Barry, QRPGLE source, lesson six, SQL RPGLE. Let's close it. Refresh my list. Lesson six has changed. And I'm just going to do a very simple SQL statement. It's going to blow your mind away. Okay exec SQL set result sets array and we're going to set it to uh, our actual data structure called departments okay for row count uh, it's not even called row count is it we use index in this case uh, and then rows okay I'm going to save it and that's all you have to do that's all you have to do. So index is the amount of rows being returned in the relational data, and that is the relational data. So let's go ahead and compile that. Great. So what we can do is if we just start debug lesson six, we're not going to run through this. We are just going to set our breakpoint here and call lesson six. Let's have a look at departments. Okay. So it has all of our departments in there. Really simple, really simple. 
and I love it. So all we're going to do, and that's the amount of rows, and we'll just let it run. Don't do anything in green screen, but what we are going to do is pull up a uh, run SQL scripts right here. Oh, why did it, where did it go? Here it is. And we need to make sure that the library list is correct. So I'm just going to go uh, edit JDBC configuration schema list. I'm going to put Barry and uh, sample on there. Save. Applying the configurations. And we're good. So this is the crazy part is with run SQL scripts, you can actually call RPG programs. You can call ILE programs, not just RPG programs. You can call ILE programs from from at like as a stored procedure. So we can say call Barry dot lesson six. We are on lesson six, aren't we? <laughs> I think I asked that every uh, video. Call Barry lesson six. Oh, well, we got some of it. We got actually got all of it, but for some reason we have some uh, locations that are null, like always null. So we should look into that. I'm not sure why that's happening, but anyway, we just we called a program and got you know relational data out of our program, which is pretty crazy if you ask me. So now we looks like we have a little bug with our location data. So let's go look at our SQL statement. Let's bring our editor back up. Let's go look at our workshop data. That's not it. Okay, let's have a look at this. And let's, we could just paste it in actually. It's just a, no, we need the whole select statement. That's part of the reason embedded SQL is so good because we can just draw, copy and paste it from department. Ah, must be my current lib. Sample department. Wow, that was fast. What about if I just select location? Oh, all the locations are null in this database. That's very strange. Oh no, they, okay, they are actually all null in the real table too. Okay, so there's no bug. Wow. So, yeah, I'm not sure why this is happening. Character conversion resulted in truncation. Number. Oh, and notice here how the uh, the column names are actually the same names as what they are in our structure: number, name, manager number, depart, parent, department, location. It's really awesome, like that. Um, yeah, really uh, simple. I'm not quite sure why. Um, not quite sure why we're getting that error though. Not ever had that before. Fun. Anyway, what I would like to show you, maybe we can figure this out while we do it, is um, is that it's possible to change change the underlying program, um, you know, without really affecting its runtime. So what we can do here, let's uh, go over to actually let's just look here. Let me just check something. Character free, character free. Yeah, I'm not sure why we'd be getting that. But let's just go ahead and change lesson six. So when we call it right now, I really wish it wouldn't display this error though, because I don't know how to fix it. It's very strange. Hmm, maybe we could Google it. That's obviously the answer to everything these days. Uh, character conversion resulted in truncation. Oh, it's related to using variant character, I think. And oh, that's okay. Variant character is fine. I'm, I'll have to look into it. I don't want to waste time in this video doing that right now, but I will actually look into it. But um, what I would like to do is show you that we can change the program, and you'll see the results ch uh, actually show up here. So what I'm going to say, really, is... Um, if <laughs> now let's say um, this is interesting. If mm, am I? Are we going to do like that? Yeah, we are. I'm going to say 
because we've already technically set it here. So what I will do is make another department and we'll like DS department T. And we're just going to do like we did earlier, we'll just department. And then we're going to say if department dot, hmm, what should we check for? Yeah, we're not just going to, we're not going to include anywhere where the manager number is null. So if department manager number equals minus one, Obviously, no, does not equal minus one. Then we will do this. We're going to say departments index equals department. So let's create that. Oh, OK. Name will indicate a department out oh, because that's a d DS. Okay, what we got now? If department dot manager number is not minus one, hmm? operands are not compatible with this type of operator. Okay, let's say if it's more than minus one, unless I've got the type mixed up. Oh, I do, because manager number is a character. So right, let's say not, uh, not minus one. Weird table, this one. So let's create that. So now when we call it, we shouldn't get anything where the manager number is minus one. There we go, we didn't. Damn, that is stressful. I need to figure that one out. Why that would be happening. It's obviously something to do with the variant of characters. We don't, oh we do, we have a name. Very strange. Anyway, so as you can see, we're actually able to update our, um, you know, our program and have the procedure change, which is really cool. Uh, very simple little hack, I would call it. It's it's really weird because this is the, uh, in the system, I guess, is treating programs like their stored procedures and our embedded SQL, you know, allows us to return re relational data to the re you know the result set, which is really cool if you ask me. Really, really, really cool functionality. So anyway, I think that's pretty much it for uh, lesson six. Uh, the next video is actually about creating uh, user-defined table functions um, to accomplish the same thing, basically. So we'll talk about that in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.